In the Mexican desert, a man is digging through some debris and accidentally finds a hidden hole on the ground containing a Nazi flag wrapped around a spearhead. As soon as he touches it, a dark force takes over his body, which now moves on its own. When he tries crossing the road, a car suddenly hits him, only for the vehicle to get smashed. A creepy symbol then appears on the man's wrist and he just keeps going as if nothing happened. Meanwhile in an apartment in Los Angeles, a mother opens a door and screams when she sees her daughter snarling on the ceiling. The family immediately seeks help, but Father Hennessy doesn't have the skills to deal with this so he calls John Constantine to do it. John is an expert in everything supernatural, like exorcisms and demonology. He's also a chainsmoker. John finds the possessed girl tied to her bed and opens a window to let the sunlight in, which the girl hates. Then John presses an amulet on the girl's forehead and it burns her skin, causing her to start shaking and screaming while John recites the incantation. Suddenly the girl stops moving, only for a creepy creature to come out of her neck and attack John. He immediately punches it to send it back, then John asks the family for a mirror, which is held above the girl while he smashes a window and asks his apprentice Chaz to move the car. Once the mirror is tied to a pulley, he tells the others to close their eyes, but one man takes a peek and starts screaming as his hair turns gray. Struggling against the girl, John forces the demon in her to look up and the mirror quickly removes the creature from her body, trapping it. As the demon tries to break the mirror, John puts all his weight on the rope to push it out, causing it to land on the car and break into a million pieces. On his way out, John sees a drawing of the legendary Spear of Destiny that killed Jesus and steals it, unaware that someone is watching from above while playing with a coin. Getting suspicious, John tells Hennessy that the exorcism was worse than usual and predicts something big is happening soon. That night, Detective Angela finds herself in a hospital bed. She hears the word Isabel whispered in the room so she gets up to follow it to the hospital roof. After removing her medical tag and letting it blow away, she jumps through the glass roof and lands in the hospital's pool. At that moment Angela wakes up in her apartment and realizes it was all a dream. The next day, Angela is called to the hospital to investigate a case and is devastated to learn that last night she had a vision. The dead person is her twin sister Isabel, and she died exactly as she dreamed it. Isabel had been admitted to the hospital as a mental patient, but Angela knew her sister well and refuses to believe she self-deleted. At the same time in Mexico, the guy with the spear makes a super jump to cross the border, causing all animals nearby to instantly die. In the meantime, John finds himself throwing up blood so he goes to the doctor. Sadly he receives terrible news, all his smoking has caused lung cancer and he doesn't have much time left. Later at home, John is visited by Beeman, who brings a bunch of supernatural items for John to use in his missions, including a gun that shoots dragon breath. John tells Beeman about the demon that tried to escape into the human realm, which isn't supposed to happen because demons can only possess, so Beeman promises to research the matter. Afterward John goes to a church where she runs into Angela and they have a brief argument over who arrived first. Angela talks to a priest because she wants to give Isabel a Catholic funeral, but the priest refuses because Isabel self-deleted and that's a mortal sin. At the same time John finds half-breed angel Gabriel and notices his wings, which only humans with certain powers can see. John asks Gabriel if God can extend his life but Gabriel just laughs, thinking that John's determination to get into heaven is a lost cause. Then John points out he's banished lots of demons back into hell and that service should make up for his sin, but Gabriel explains that self-sacrifice and belief are the only things that will get him into heaven. Since John has only been saving people for convenience and not because he really wants to help, it doesn't count. Meanwhile Hennessy concentrates as he runs his hands over a bunch of newspapers, hearing the news articles in his head. Finally he stops at the article talking about Isabel's death, sensing something there. At the same time, Angela watches the footage of Isabel's death and hears her say John's name. Then all the phones in the building start ringing at the same time, but nobody answers when she picks up. Sometime later, John has a coughing fit in the middle of the street and falls to his knees. A crab appears on his hand, and when someone tries to approach him, John is suddenly attacked by a demon covered in insects. A powerful hit sends John flying and he accidentally drops the box with his weapon, so he has to struggle against the demon's hold as it tries to choke him. Using a piece of a sign, John hits the demon to push him away and finally grabs the box, but before he can open it, the demon attacks again. There is more struggle as they rush down the street, only for John to throw the box away and let a car crash into the demon, killing it. Then John stomps on any insect left. Afterward John and Chaz go to Midnight's Nightclub, a place where the supernatural hangs out. A test at the door checks if visitors can see the drawing on a card and John is allowed inside, but Chaz is turned down because he doesn't have the power. Inside the club, people are enjoying the debauchery but John ignores them to enter the back room, where he meets the owner Papa Midnight. He's a powerful occultist who unlike John has decided to stay neutral in the fight of heaven versus hell. John tells him about the demon that attacked him, but Midnight doesn't believe him because the rules accepted by both sides say pure demons can't wander earth. They're then interrupted by the half-breed demon Balthazar, who keeps playing with a coin as he teases John. When John threatens him back, Midnight cuts in and reminds them his club doesn't accept hostility. Another coughing fit suddenly overtakes John, so he has to rush out. Later at home, 
John is visited by Angela, who wants his help because she thinks Isabel was forced to self-delete by someone else. However John thinks she's just desperate for his sister to go to heaven and turns her down. At that moment he sees shadows outside chasing Angela, so he goes after her and decides her case may be connected to the recent demonic incidents. Angela explains she doesn't believe in demons when suddenly the lights around them start going out one by one except for a merry statue in a display window. Weird windy noises are coming from above, and John explains they're from flying creatures while taking out a piece of fabric. When he lights it up with a holy glow, he exposes the demons surrounding them, who immediately get burned down to ashes. Angela throws up from the sulfur and John points out the demons are after her, not him. Agreeing to take Angela's case, John decides to visit hell to see if Isabel is there, which would indicate that she truly self-deleted. At Angela's apartment, he puts his feet into a basin of water that will work as a conduit and asks Angela to leave before grabbing her pet because cats have a connection to the supernatural. By staring into the cat's eyes, John creates a link and time stops around him before he appears in hell. With holy water at hand for protection, John walks through the horrible landscape of hell, ignoring the raging wind, the demons, and the damned souls until he finds Isabel at the edge of a building. As demons surround them, Isabel says John's name and takes off her medical tag, so John chases after it. While Isabel falls, the demons chase after John and jump to attack him. Once he has the tag, John breaks a bottle of holy water on his chest and appears back in Isabel's apartment, expelling smoke from his whole body. He gives the tag back to Angela while confirming that Isabel did self-delete and she's damned for it. Meanwhile Hennessy sneaks into the morgue to find Isabel's corpse. He tries to read her memories by grabbing her arm, but at that moment a creepy mark appears on her wrist, which makes Hennessy back away in fear. Terrified, he tries to drink from his flask, yet not a single drop falls. At that moment a guard finds him, so Hennessy rushes to a store and desperately tries to drink from any alcohol bottle he can find, but the liquid never falls. After smashing a bunch of bottles, Hennessy collapses again and begins to choke, so with his last breath he uses a bottle opener to draw on his hand. Suddenly Balthazar appears playing with his coin and enjoys watching Hennessy slowly die as it's revealed he made an illusion to make the priest think there was no liquid, but he's actually choking on tons of it. Back to John, he explains to Angela that as a kid, he was already able to see all kinds of supernatural entities. Not knowing what to do, his parents sent him to a mental institution to be treated, which made it worse. Feeling scared and outcast, young John tried to self-delete, and he was officially dead for two minutes. However in hell time moves more slowly, so he feels like he was down there for a lifetime. The paramedics brought him back and John finally accepted that everything he could see was real. Because of his terrible sin, his soul will go to hell, so he works exorcising demons hoping it will earn him salvation. Heaven and hell have a bet over who can win humanity's souls and they create half-breeds like Gabriel and Balthazar, who whisper things to people to make them better or worse. Their chat is interrupted when Angela gets a call about Hennessy's death and the duo immediately goes to the scene. John notices a bloody mark on Hennessy's palm, which is the same symbol Isabel and the Mexican guy had, Hennessy left it for John. After making a copy, John sends it to Beeman for research. Afterward they go to Isabel's hospital room and John snaps at Angela, trying to force her to think of anything that could serve as a clue. Angela finally remembers that as kids they had a secret way to communicate with each other and she breathes on the window, fogging it up to reveal the message Corinthians 17, which shouldn't exist. As they drive away, they call Beeman, who explains that the Hell Bible has more passages than the traditional Bible. Corinthians 17 talks of the son of the devil called Mammon, who will bring eternal darkness upon humanity and whose symbol is the one from Hennessy's hand. Mammon wants to steal control from Lucifer, and to do that he needs a powerful psychic plus a divine being. Beeman starts stumbling over his words and senses something is coming for him, so he hangs up right before insects start coming out of his eyes. Worried, John and Angela rush to check on Beeman but it's too late, they find him dead and covered in insects. In the meantime, the man carrying the spearhead steals a car and starts driving toward Los Angeles. Back to Angela, she finally admits to John that she and Isabel used to see things as kids too. However when Isabel was treated for mental illness, Angela started to deny it, and eventually she stopped seeing things. Now she feels like she abandoned Isabel, so she asks John to help her see again. John agrees and fills a bathtub with water, then he makes Angela lie in it. He holds her down even when she starts running out of breath, and Angela struggles against him to no avail. When she finally drowns, time slows down, only to come back to normal in a second. This is enough time for Angela to have visited hell and get her power back. Suddenly she senses something and rushes to Beeman's office, where she finds Balthazar's coin. Moments later, Balthazar is looking at himself in the mirror in his office, which starts bubbling up. Suddenly the dragon's breath destroys the mirror and sends Balthazar flying, but the fire doesn't hurt him. Then John hits him with holy water which does burn the demon's face, causing Balthazar to tackle him against the wall to choke him. The attack makes John drop the dragon's breath, but he pulls out brass knuckles engraved with crosses and uses them to start beating up Balthazar, pushing him onto the table. Then he stands over Balthazar with a Bible in hand, threatening to bless him instead of exorcising him so his soul would go to heaven. 
Terrified, Balthazar explains that Mammon needs the Spear of Destiny to come to the human realm. At that moment Angela appears behind John and Balthazar laughs, revealing his goal was Angela and John brought her to them, so John shoots him down. After the duo leaves, a mysterious figure appears over Balthazar. The demon asks to be revived because he completed his mission, but the other being just watches him disintegrate. On their way out, Angela realizes that Isabel self-deleted so the demons wouldn't use her to bring Mammon, and now she's dead they want to use Angela instead. Suddenly she starts feeling weird and something pulls her through the elevator door and dozens of walls. John jumps through the holes to follow her, but Angela is then dragged away through the sky out of his reach. A desperate John rushes to the club and shoots the back door to demand the chair, so Midnight responds by using magic to pin him against the wall. Wriggling in pain, John explains that nobody is following the rules anymore and Midnight finally agrees to help. In the artifact storage, they retrieve a chair used for capital punishment. John takes off his shoes and after wetting the floor, Midnight electrocutes him with a bulb. This triggers a vision that shows John the man with the spear heading to the hospital, where tons of demons possessing humans are currently gathering. A demon tries to attack John, but Midnight quickly pulls him out. Afterward, Chaz prepares special bullets for John and surprises him with a plan. Meanwhile Angela is dropped at the hospital pool and finds the man with the spearhead. She shoots him until she runs out of bullets, but they have no effect and the guy drags her underwater. Moments later, John and Chaz arrive at the hospital too. Chaz goes to the water tank to bless it with a holy cross while John finds the demons, putting a lighter near the fire alarm to activate the sprinkles. Holy water starts raining in the room and the demons are weakened, so John starts shooting them to kill them all. Some demons try to attack them but John shoots them first, however he runs out of bullets. Luckily Chaz joins him and kills the remaining beasts. Then John and Chaz look for Angela, who is being drowned by the Mexican man. When she appears in hell, she hears her name whispered by Mammon, who immediately jumps on her. At that moment John enters the pool room and finds the dead body of the Mexican guy. The water starts boiling and a possessed Angela emerges, but John refuses to kill her. A fight ensues as John tries to exorcise her, but Angela drags him underwater to drown him. Chaz quickly jumps in to help and between both of them they hold Angela down on the floor. John begins chanting the incantation while Angela struggles, only for her to suddenly go back to normal. Unfortunately it isn't over, Mammon is in her stomach trying to get out. This time Chaz chants along with John and after lots of effort, it seems Mammon disappears. Suddenly Chaz is pushed back and smashed against the ceiling, instantly dying. Furious, John places the tattoos on his arms together and says an incantation to reveal whatever is hiding in the room. The ceiling appears to open up and Gabriel drops on top of John, revealing he's the divine touch that would help bring Mammon over. Gabriel thinks it's unfair that awful people like mass murderers only need to repent to go to heaven, so he wants to bring Mammon to cause lots of suffering, that way only those who are capable of surviving such a thing will be worthy of heaven. Then Gabriel blows at John to send him crashing into a glass door before grabbing the spear to start the ritual. Desperate to stop him, John prays to God and uses some glass shards to self-delete. Suddenly time freezes and Gabriel and Lucifer appears because John is the only soul he's allowed to take himself. John explains that Mammon is about to come to Earth and ruin Hell's plan so Lucifer makes another door explode to check if it's true. Seeing Gabriel about to do the stabbing, Lucifer takes Angela away right before time unfreezes and the spear comes down. The reflection on the water shows Lucifer holding Mammon over Angela while he reminds Gabriel that the world is his. Gabriel tries to attack Lucifer but he has no power because God has abandoned him, so Lucifer sends Mammon back to Hell and burns Gabriel's wings down before pushing into the pool. Now it's all over, Lucifer asks if John wants a life extension as a reward for warning him about Mammon, but instead John asks him to send Isabel's soul to heaven. Lucifer does it with just one gesture and then drags John through the floor, happy to take his soul at last. However an invisible force stops him and Lucifer realizes that, thanks to his sacrifices, John doesn't belong in hell anymore. John's soul starts floating up to the light of heaven as he gives Lucifer the finger, but Lucifer refuses to lose his favorite soul and inserts his hands into John's lungs, removing the cancer and extending his life in hopes he'll sin again. Afterward John retrieves the spearhead and checks on Angela, who is fine. Gabriel is also alive but he's human now, so he asks John to get his revenge as he hands him the gun. However John just punches him and lets him live, knowing being human is punishment enough. Then John says goodbye to Angela on the roof, giving her the spear to hide away from dangerous people like himself. He also has some gum instead of a cigarette. Sometime later, John visits Chaz's grave and sees his soul become an angel.